In the last video, we built the command station for the test track using X-Rail for the automation. Now I'm going to show you how we put that into effect. I showed a little bit on the Monday Night Live stream, but I did a little bit more experimenting since then and changed a few things around. So here's what I came up with. In an earlier video, I showed you how I built the X-Rail command station so I could do automation on my test track. Well, here is the first project that I am working on just around the circle with one IR sensor. As the locomotive approaches, you can see it flickers a little bit but goes on steady once it hits the rail car. That's when it stops. That's the first command on there for the IR sensor. And then it randomly pauses for anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds and then starts back up again and continues around the loop again until you shut this off. Here's an example of the instructions that you need for this operation. This is contained in the tab myautomation.h. The first line, xrail, lets it know that there are commands following. The next line, send loco, with two parameters, the loco number and the sequence you want identified. Here I'm using loco 8432 and automation number four, round in circles. This can be found in the examples. Identifies the loco involved and what automation to use. The next line tells the loco to go forward at speed tip 25 and the following line after that turns the function zero on which is the light. The AT40 is the IR sensor. When you get to the sensor on pin 40 it stops which is the following command and then the delay random anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds and then it follows again forward at speed step 30. The after command appears to keep the IR sensor active. As you'll notice, it fluctuates as there's gap between the rail cars and finally shuts off after the last rail car passes. I'm assuming this is so you don't get several stops between the gaps between the rail cars. The last command, follow four, is just going back to the top and repeating the same thing over and over again until you shut off the power. You'll notice in the video that there are no throttles involved. So everything is automatic. You just turn the power on, it boots up, and the sequence starts. Simple as that. The whistle and the bell at start and stop is programmed into the CVs of the locomotive. I will be adding more features in the week to come. You can see I have a push button there in the bottom, which I am planning on working on for additional features. I keep my laptop handy so I can make changes to the code and test it while I'm right there at the test track. You can see the turnout that I have at the end. I plan on continuing that around on the outside and bringing it in as a siding connecting down where the mouse is at this time. I originally wanted it on the inside but that seemed a little bit too short. It only gave me a locomotive and three cars barely in there. I'm doing this by trial and error as we go along with this. I'll be making changes periodically and updating you with the changes that I make on here. I added the DF robot sensor shield for the ease of accessing the three pins for each one of the sensors or LEDs or anything else that I want to put in there for inputs and outputs. The PCA9685 is used for servos and can also be used for signaling. I'm going to be using dwarf signals on here so we'll just need a red and green but the program allows you 
red, amber, and green. I added a DF Robot I squared C hub in order to have more pins available to plug in my I squared C devices. There are two tinker pin connections available on the motor shield, but only one of them are accessible if you're using the MakerFab's Wi Fi shield. I chose to go off of the DF robot board and jump her over to the hub for my I squared C connections instead. Here are the connections for the I squared C on the outside row and communications for Wi Fi on the inside roads. I also picked up the 5 volts for the PCA9685 from the pins available in that cluster right there. Those four wires connect to the Grove connector on the I squared C hub for all the additional I squared C devices that you will need or want in the future. As I stated earlier, we will be updating with more features as I do more experimenting with EX Rail. And once they have more features coming out, I'll also be, be adding them here. To refresh you on the components I used, I used the Elegoo Mega 2560, a DF robot input output sensor shield, an Arduino motor shield, MakerFab's Wi Fi shield, a SunFounder LCD display, a DF robot I squared C hub, a PCA 9685, several IR sensors, DF robot buck converters, two of them, 90 watt adjustable power supply a sheet of Lexan, miscellaneous wire and connectors, and mounting hardware. The total cost for this project was about $126. Now mind you, I had a lot of this already in stock. I only had to buy a couple of pieces. And since I showed this on the Monday Night Live stream, I was informed that there are a couple of pieces that are out of stock, such as the buck converters with, from DF Robot, and uh, the Maker Fab is taking a long time from China. So there are other alternatives that I mentioned on the live stream, and you could find them on my webpage also. So take a look at it on the webpage. For your convenience, I've added the items to my Arduino page that have been hard to find. And here is the clone for the Deke Robot motor shield. Like I said before, I haven't tested it. But like I said on the live stream, there was someone on here that answered the question, are the jumper connections the same as the Arduino for the DCC++ base station? And someone answered, yes, they are the same. So we'll, we'll just say that this is a copy of the Deke robot and you can see that it is blurred out where it should be saying Deke robot. So I have that up on my Arduino page. The other item is the buck conver converters, the uh, DF robot buck converters. Uh, I checked out these and these are close to the same. Uh, you can get them, see right here, on the Amazon page. They are a step down buck converter and they'll get you the 9 volts and the 5 volts and you get two of them in this package right here. And also if you're leery about uh, going to China for the Maker Fab, you can get the ESP01S. You'll have to do a little bit of playing around with the pins on here, but on my webpage I show you how you can hook them up. I think there's a wiring diagram on there. And it's easily marked on the on the bottom. You can see you use 3.3 3 volts on this one instead of the 5 volts. So you would be hooking this up to your 3.3 3 volt pin on your Arduino Mega. Uh, you'd hook up the transmit, the receive, and there are their ground and then there's another one I'm not quite sure we'll have to look at the at the uh, wiring diagram but there's one more that goes to 3.3 volts so that's that one right there so 
uh, I hope that helps out in finding the parts that you would need. Okay, just to put this up here so it's a little bit easier so that you don't have to go searching for it. Here is what you have to take a look at. You can see the RX and TX, the ground, the 3.3 volts. And here, right here, 3.3 volts go to the VCC on the ESP8266. 3.3 also goes to the CH. PD pin ground goes to ground TX goes to the RX and RX goes to the TX uh, I hope that helps out to make things a little bit easier again I think I have this on my web page and if not you could also find this on the DCC EX page reference hardware Wi-Fi boards ESP 01 and uh, we'll, as always, we'll have links to that. So until the next time, we'll see you.